One of the nice things about our tensors is that we define everything independent of our particular choice of basis. This means that we are free to choose a basis that is most suitable for the problem that we are looking into. This can be the standard basis, but the standard basis is certainly not always the most convenient case. Often it is better to choose a different basis B prime instead of the standard basis B. This works well if our new basis B prime is related to the old one B, usually the standard basis, by an orthogonal tensor Q. This video we will learn how we can get our new basis via our tensor Q and we will see how we can interpret the components of Q. So we start with an original basis B, B and just take the standard basis, that's what we often do. And then some basis B prime, E1 prime, E2 prime, E3 prime, different basis. And then we want that this new basis, this different basis is given via an orthogonal tensor Q, such that uh, QE1 equals E1 prime, QE2 equals E2 prime, and QE3 equals E3 prime or EI prime equals Q times EI. So that is how we are defining our new basis. But what does this mean, for example, for the components of Q? Well, we choose as usual our matrix of Q and the elements Q, I, J as usual. So the Q, I, J, when you put them in a the matrix, you have Q11, Q12, Q13, Q21, Q22, Q23, Q31, Q32, Q33. That's how you define the components of Q just in the normal way. And of course, the Qij are given by Ei in a product with Q times Ej. So that's nothing new. Now, what does this mean for our new basis? What is the relation between the new basis factors, Ei prime, and those numbers Qij? That's a bit tricky, but we'll see. First, we do the following trick. We express E1 prime, so the first new basis factor, in terms of B, in terms of our old basis factors. So we write E1 prime equals AM times EM. You can always do that, of course. Then we can compute Q times E1. Well, Q times E1 was E1 prime, so that equals AM times EM. Now we take on the left and the right the inner product is EN. So we get EN inner product Q1 and EN inner product AM EM. So that's what's happening over here. Now the uh, left hand side gives me by definition the QN1. So uh, using this formula over here with I equals N and J equals 1. And the right hand side here is inner product gives me an AM times a n inner product E m, so it gives, gives me a, a delta m n over here. So A m times delta m n gives you an A n. Uh, so you see the Q n 1 equals A n, or you can uh, uh, use this to express your E 1 prime, uh, renaming the n to an m in this expression over here. I'm plugging it in over here because you need the AM E1 prime equals Q M1 E M. So what does this uh, mean? That the uh, components of E1 prime in the old basis are uh, Q11, Q21, Q31. And more general, E I prime, of course, if you generalize this, if you do this also for 2 and 3, you get E i prime equals qmi em. So what's then the consequence? Well, from this formula, e1 prime equals qm1 em, you have q11, q21, q31 are the components of e1 prime in the old basis. So this first column of the matrix Q uh, gives you the uh, components of e1 prime in the old basis, and similarly for the second and the third column. So the matrix of your uh, transformation Q gives you your 
new basis vectors as columns in the old basis. That's the first consequence. So that's an, also an easy way uh, to find your matrix Q, by the way. A second consequence, quite straightforward. Uh, B prime is an orthonormal basis. So that's really nice to have orthonormal basis uh, all the time. And you can see this by computing EI prime in our product, EJ prime. We use this formula over here. So EI prime gives you QMIEM, EJ prime gives you, use another summation index, of course, Q and J, E, N. The Q, M, I, and Q, and J's are just numbers, so you can take them in front. That's what's done over here. You're left with an inner product, E, M, inner product, E, N, which is obviously delta M, N. Then performing the sum over the N over here, you get a Q, M, J. And uh, uh, because uh, we have an orthogonal tensor, and the Q, M i equals Q i m transpose. So what it reads over here is Q transpose cam times Q, which gives you the identity matrix or delta i j. So you see indeed E i prime inner product E j prime equals delta i j. So we again have an orthonormal basis. So this is how you can find a new basis, which is orthonormal uh, using an orthogonal tensor Q.